Our lives are defined by the way we see the world. So let's reimagine, reimagine, and reimagine again. Hi everyone, my name is Dylan. Thank you all for being here. And a big thank you to TEDx and Laguna Blanca for hosting this beautiful event, for that wonderful introduction. Um, I'm really excited to be here today to be talking about entrepreneurship and unleashing your creative ambition. Um, I just realized I don't have a clicker, I forgot that. Uh, so anyway, someone can bring that up real quick. Cue the slides, maybe if I just point. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so, um, again, uh, my name is Dylan. I am the founder and CEO of SoSwag Inc., which is a nonprofit organization that upcycles clothing for homeless youth. And before I dive into this, I just want to gauge your, your responses. If everyone in the audience can raise their hand if they chose the outfit that you're wearing today. Okay, see almost everyone's hand is up. Most people don't think twice about choosing their outfit every day, right? Neither did I until visiting a homeless youth shelter, where I realized that not everyone has the simple privilege of deciding what they want to wear when they wake up. Since then, I set out on a mission to ensure that those who receive secondhand clothing never feel second rate. Here on the bottom left is the homeless youth shelter I visited when I was 14 years old, where I saw kids who didn't have new clothing to go to school and job interviews in. I wanted to help, but I didn't know where to start. All I had at home was a trash bag of old clothes and my mom's dusty old sewing machine. I decided to be innovative with the resources I already had and transform the old clothes into new trendy outfits that teens like myself would feel proud to wear. But there was one problem. I had no idea how to sew. <laughs> so I turned to YouTube, did some basic DIY tutorials, and I started out with this shirt. Um, and I tried to turn it into a skirt. I didn't have any... <laughs> I didn't have any French curves to cut the skirt along or a dress form to fit it, so I wound up using a bowl for the pattern and a soup pot to fit the skirt. Um, I don't think it turned out too bad, so here's the final product. And... And with my creative thinking of um, using unconventional materials, I was able to transform once this men's shirt to a new skirt, all thanks to a soup pot. <laughs> um, it was using this kind of creative, outside-the-box thinking that I pushed myself to complete design projects and overcome the challenges I faced as a new learner of sewing. And before I knew it, I had a mini collection that was ready to donate. When I went back to the same shelter I toured a few months before and dropped these few garments off, I was so moved by their res emotional response of how these new clothes made them feel so much more confident and how they were excited to go to school and go to job interviews now and how it motivated them to continue their transition off the streets. Their response was so powerful, in fact, that I decided to turn my one-time project into a full-fledged nonprofit. But once again, I was at a roadblock how do you start a company with no cash and no experience? I turned back to the internet and taught myself everything from intellectual property law to how to properly use a sewing machine, and from web design to donation management. Eventually, SoSwag became SoSwag Inc. with the model Upcycle Uplift, and I was a 14-year-old CEO of a tax-exempt organization. Having just started high school at the time, I was excited but overwhelmed. Now that I had a platform as the only organization that both upcycles and redistributes clothing for homeless youth, I had, a much large, I had the potential to make a much larger impact, but it was something I could not do alone. Desperate to find support for my growing endeavor, I contacted hundreds of people, doing everything from handing out glossy business cards to local store managers, to cold calling executives of international retail corporations. Almost everyone said no. 
until I finally got a yes. And that one person happened to be the head of PR at Abercrombie and & Fitch. And today, through our partnership, we've been able to upcycle thousands of pounds of textile waste into hundreds of new outfits for those in need. And to reiter reiterate this importance of staying resilient in the wake of rejection is none other than Lady Gaga herself. There can be 100 people in the room and 99 don't believe in you. But I had this one incredible talent with me. And there can be 100 people in the room and 99 don't believe in you and you just need one to believe in you and that was him, so. You can have 100 people in the room that are watching you and 99 don't believe in you and one does and that was him, so. You know, there could be 100 people in the room and 99 don't believe, but all it takes is one. You know, 100 people can be in a room and 99 don't believe in you and just one person believes in you and it can change everything. There can be 100 people in the room and 99 don't believe in you and just one does. You know, there can be a hundred people in the room and 99 don't believe in you and just one does. A hundred people and there can be in a one room, right? And 99 don't believe in you, but just one believes and it can change your whole life. Okay, so she goes on for another four minutes, but I think we get the idea. So this is kind of what So Swag looks like now. Um, we get our donations from individuals, retail stores, but mostly through corporate partnerships um, such as Abercrombie. And it goes through a redesigning and repairing process before it gets redistributed to other nonprofit alliances and shelters across Southern California. And our three main initiatives are first and foremost to provide clothing and confidence for those in need. There are over 65,000 homeless people in Los Angeles County alone. The second one is to reduce the textile waste that's generated in the US every year, which is over 25 million pounds through the process of upcycling and lastly is to work with corporate retailers in advancing their own corporate social responsibility so that these for-profit focused companies can also have a direct impact on their communities. Um, now I want to kind of bring it back to my position where I was um, when, uh, right after I toured the shelter for the first time and wanted to help and highlight the importance of the entrepreneurial spirit and how it can apply to your own daily lives. So let's say, for instance, I have the mindset of a typical businessman who is, of course, focused on money. And um, if I focus my attention on funding and I had all the money in the world by that point, I would be able to buy all the new clothes in the world and give them to those who need it most, which is great because that's what I originally thought I wanted to do, which was to help those in need and provide them with new clothing. But it ends there. It does nothing for CSR sustainability. Whereas, as thinking like an entrepreneur who takes money out of the equation and has a good idea of partnering with other for-profit companies and using upcycling to make new clothes before it gets redistributed, then not only are you addressing the homelessness issue, but you're also helping CSR and sustainability. And to sum it all up, these are the three main things that I want you guys to take away from my experience is the first, you don't need money to start. A good idea is worth a lot more than cash, and if you're dedicated to whatever your passion is, whether it be a business or a school project, there's no doubt it will become successful. The second is to forget about the easiest solution. Don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone and think outside the box, because oftentimes the easiest solution isn't the best solution. And third is creativity is the key to innovation. Really, you don't want to get out of your comfort zone, like I said before, and never be scared of failure because every time something either gets in the way, um, using creativity can always overcome that. So I never thought I'd say this, but thank you for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> I'll be around after session two ends to answer any questions. I look forward to meeting all of you. Thank you.